think it's actually between me and Mallory then, because it's um it's kind of a hard talk to um I have a lot of video clips, um and it's because I was asked to make this very interactive. So I mean, I guess we'll see how it goes, but um because I think it's gonna be hard to respond to the video clips without seeing them. But but we'll we'll make it work. So okay, let me go ahead and um open on my PowerPoint then. Control this computer using accessibility features. Okay. Sorry, it's making me do some other. That's okay. Hoops here to my privacy settings. Right. All right. Is that showing up on the screen or not really? No, I'm not seeing anything. Hmm. Okay. Let me try it again. So the share, so open share tray. Oh, here we go. And then do, I, do you want me to give control or no? No, well, if you want to, if you want to keep control, go ahead. Okay. Great, that looks great. All right, hold on. Slideshow. Do you see that or not really? Is it moving? Yeah, I see it. Okay, well, shout if there's an issue. Okay. So um, my talk today, um, so I'm Dr. Hong. I'm at um, Michigan Ear Institute and um, as well as at Wayne State um, University. And um, my talk today is um, called Supervising Residents in the OR, um, Common Errors in Temporal Bone Surgery. Um, and I was asked to make um, this kind of an interactive talk. Um, so, you know, again, if you don't have a video screen, it might be kind of hard to be, for it to be interactive. Um, but what I have during the course of this is a number of video clips that we've taken of our residents um, drilling temporal bones. Um, and um, essentially it kind of shows certain, you know, ask for your input in terms of what they're doing, what you suggest they could do better, um, and, you know, similar to what you'd be doing in the OR yourself. Um, and so hopefully this will be helpful, especially for the fellows, especially if you're in your um, earlier years as a fellow or um, even for residents, any residents on. So there's been a lot of interest in terms of determining the best way to educate residents um, in temporal bone dissection. Um, traditionally, this has been done with cadaveric specimens in the temporal bone lab, as shown here. Um, you know, residents are given a temporal bone in a manual and asked to drill a mastoidectomy um, while identifying key structures without violating them. Um, over the course of going through multiple temporal bones over the course of the residency, um, supplemented with operating the OR, um, residents gradually get better and better at temporal bone surgery. Um, and so shown here is a picture of the temporal bone course we host at MEI a few times a year. I mean, we have 15 stations and there's fellows and attendings kind of roaming um, the lab, um, watching residents pointing out ways to improve. Um, and in addition, in our lab, um, we have a couple extra um, bonus features that can help with uh, instruction. Um, you know, we have like a central uh, teaching station that, um, that projects to all the large monitors around the room. Um, so if the instructor wants to kind of show off a certain procedure, they can do it. Um, and we also have the ability to live stream surgeries into the upper, into the, uh, sorry, into the temporal bone lab, um, which again, just provides um, additional supplementary um, education. Um, more recently, um, your surgeons have been looking at additional ways to improve uh, the training experience. Um, this includes, um, for example, 3D printing temporal bones um, instead of using cadaver bones. Um, people talk about using temporal bone simulators, including incorporating the use of virtual reality um, to try to help with um, learning temporal bone dissection. Um, people talked about using image guidance, um, even in the lab setting, in addition to drilling temporal bones. Um, and at MEI, we even have brought the exoscopes into the um, temporal bone lab, um, with exoscopes providing like a 3D 
um, pictorial representation of what it, the surgeon's seeing so that anyone else in the room can see exactly what the surgeon's seeing. Now, all that being said, um, you know, that what we um, at MEI, one task we found particularly useful um, in both teaching and assessing resident progress is a timed and graded mastoidectomy. Um, so all the third year ENT residents at Wayne State are asked to perform a canal wall up mastoidectomy, um, including opening the facial recess. Um, and they're given 45 minutes um, to complete this task. Um, and then they're shown like a list of criteria on which they'll be graded on, um, which is based on the uh, 2009 laryngoscope publication at Hopkins, um, looking at ways to kind of assess uh, temporal wound dissection. Um, and then what we will do is we will video record the session. Um, and then immediately after the session, instructors will provide immediate feedback. We'll kind of literally go over with the resident, oh, this is, you know, these are the notes we took, this is what you do wrong, this is, you know, how you can improve. Um, and we found this particular structural helpful for a couple of reasons. The first is by making it a timed and looking over the shoulder kind of task, um, it creates some pressure, I think, on the residents to kind of help simulate the pressure they might see in the operating room, which gives us a pretty good sense of the attendings, how ready they are for drilling in the OR setting. Um, and the second, because we can literally just rewind the video and immediately after they're done, go over different video clips showing them what they did, I think it really helps crystallize in their minds what they can do to improve. Um, and so, as I mentioned, this is an interactive talk um, you're going to see video clips of residents drilling this timed 45 minute session. And I'll be calling out on, you know, I guess the folks who have videos, um, the ability to look at videos to kind of see, okay, you know, number one, you know, what is it they're doing? Number two, you know, what are ways that you'd improve on what they're doing? What would you suggest as though you're in the OR? Um, and then I'll comment on it as well. Um, and hopefully, my hope is that for many of you, a lot of this will be super easy, right? So you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know all this stuff. Um, do this all the time, but but hopefully as well, you'll pick up some pearls in terms of things that maybe, again, maybe you wouldn't do, but you wouldn't have thought of in terms of, you know, ways to help instruct your residents. So before we jump into the videos, these are some of the answers, right? So these are some pearls of drilling that I think everyone's probably pretty familiar with. Um, and some of these things um, include, you know, holding the drill as close to the shaft of burr as possible, um, stabilizing your hand by anchoring, um, optimizing your posture, you know, making sure they're using the largest burr safely possible, the appropriate suction size with the burr, you know, drilling under constant thin irrigation, drilling only what you can see. Um, and then we always talk about saucerizing widely, avoiding creating sharp ledges, um, drilling with the side of the burr, not the tip, um, using long deliberate strokes, not short quick strokes. Um, and you really wanna drill parallel to structures that you're looking for. Um, and when, especially when you're close to vital structures like the facial nerve, you know, make sure that you're using um, a diamond burr, not a cutting burr. Okay, so these are some of the answers um, in terms of ways to improve. And let's go ahead and move on to the clips. And I guess on the first one, we'll start with Mallory. Um, so um, I'll play this video. And um, first, you want to start by saying if it's a left ear or right ear. And then after you see if it's a left ear or right ear, then you tell me where in the dissection they are. And then also maybe comments on, you know, what you like about the, what they're doing and what you'd suggest for them to do. Um, and we have a bunch of these clips. So starting off, just thinking about the left ear, uh, they're kind of on the cortical mastoid portion of things. And they're outlining their superior and EAC cut and then deciding how far back they want to go. Yeah, so really early in um, things you like about what they're doing, things that you would worry to look out for. You know, I think they kind of have very deliberate like movements. So they're very careful, um, cautious, and, you know, it looks like maybe appropriately slow, but but not inappropriately slow for the level. Um, that view looked more like drilling with the kind of tip of the drill rather than the side, but that view looks like pretty good drilling with the side. Um, hard to tell, but it almost looks like the drill is wiggling a little bit. So I'd be worried about control almost, like gripping the drill with um, intention and confidence. Um, 
Yeah, so overall, I think they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, as you kind of are saying, it's very, very early on. Um, but I think the main thing, and you'd be surprised, like sometimes the residents think, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm so lateral. This is like a freebie, right? I mean, I've literally seen people make this superior cut here. And they're literally like, I'm so lateral. They're drilling as hard as they can. And literally like one swipe, they're in, or two swipes, they're in a Dura, right? So, so I mainly kind of, um, you know, we always talk about starting with the, you know, the triangle and all that. Um, but I think even early on, you just kind of want to make sure that you know, they're not just like drilling as hard as they can in one spot. And they're actually, they're really looking, not just kind of assuming that, oh yeah, they're just that really safe and they're good to go. Right? But overall, I think a pretty good, uh, pretty good starting point. Right. All right. So now I can't see. I don't know if there's anyone else on the call that has video capability. Otherwise, they just keep calling you, Mallory. But it's kind of. So, I saw someone just pop up. All right. Is there anyone else you suggest? Uh, or should we just go with you. I'm here. Dan Morrison's here. Oh, can you see? <laughs> I can see. Oh, okay. I thought you were just on. Um. I, I you were. I, just I got on. home. I'm on. I'm on my computer now, so I, you can call Perfect. me. Okay, so let's do this one. Yeah. Does anybody want to get there? Sorry, right, I think she's busy. I don't want to bother her. Okay, so we have like four more. Does anybody know? Okay. Wants to get their boots. You want to get your boots done? Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, so these are my the left. Okay. Yes. Just send them to the pharmacy. So the camera angle is a little different here. I I think this is still left ear. This looks yep. like they're working on the sort of working towards the antrum area uh, on the cadaveric temporal bone. Um, I would like, you know, they're they're sort of alternating their suction irrigator along. They're sort of swiping one then swiping the other over the field. And um, I'd like to see the irrigation sort of more continuously bathing that drill um, sure. just in general. Um, they sort of seem to be tentatively sort of painting along, which is which is fine. I don't really, but I don't really see a lot of purpose in in the strokes that, with the drill that they're making. But um, nothing particularly dangerous going on, at least per se. Uh, but I don't see a lot of progress necessarily being made uh, with that particular clip. So the um, the ear canal is right here. Actually, that's the ear canal there. They're pretty lateral. So given that, any suggestions for what they should do or problems? What, I'm under, sorry. Where did um, you... The ear canal is right where they're this. Uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor here. The ear canal is up here. I can't see yeah. your cursor, but I, I mean, I think I, I think I see where the ear canal is. Yeah. So they're kind of like rolling over the ear canal. Yeah, right? they're they're lowering that that canal for sure. Correct. Yeah. Cause so, so, so they may be so focused on the so. And they really, they should kind of do what the first case did, where they kind of define the limits, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes what happens is they're so focused maybe on the tegmen that they're not paying attention to the front of the drill bit. And then they're kind of rolling over the ear canal and kind of lowering it as they're going, right? Um, so, so really, they, I think, have to kind of step back for a second and just remember, okay, yeah, I don't want to get in a tegmen and watching it, but don't lower your ear canal wall down unnecessarily. All right. I'm gonna go. I just need to get my back right. I guess back to Mallory, unless there's Nope, let's do it. Okay. So first, left ear or right ear? Yes, this is looking like a right ear. You can see yeah. kind of rutazygoma headed, uh, I guess, towards the top of the screen. Um, and they, it almost looks like part of the cortical mastoid was drilled inferiorly and they've decided to come back superiorly. A lot of pressure there and almost digging into a hole, kind of creating a ledge superiorly. So I might say start laterally and now they're kind of drilling almost perpendicular to the tegmen, which I, you know, I can't really tell what level, but that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I'd almost prefer kind of like front to back, drilling in the direction of the tegmen, revealing from lateral to medial. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. So, so I think what they're doing is, you know, they're obviously you see all this bone dust here and they're kind of like drilling a deep, dark ledge, like you're saying. 
And then it's almost like someone's whispered in their ear, hey, by the way, don't <laughs> leave a ledge up, right? And then they're like, oh, I got to go lower the ledge. And then they're drilling the, you want to stay with your strokes parallel to the tegmen, like long, broad strokes. They're kind of making like corrective strokes. So they figure it out too late. Oh yeah, I, I actually wasn't really drilling. You know, I was leaving a ledge. Let me go ahead and lower it, right? Um, so, all right, very good. Okay, so go back to Dan then. All right, so left ear. Sort of. I play that over again. Yeah, let's see. So we're working on the tegman again at this point, and uh, well, some of that drilling's off the camera. But what I can, it looks uh, similar in a way to the last video, in that they're sort of coming back and taking some bone off more laterally um, on the cortex side over a ridge of bone over the tegman and. Uh, but they're using some smoother strokes, um, painting in the direction of the structure they're uh, looking for, which I appreciate. Um, so if they're looking for tegmen, are they finding tegmen? It might be hard to tell, but is there something limiting their ability to find tegmen? Uh, so, so it almost looks like they want to go higher, right? So, so what you'll sometimes see in the OR is like, you know, residents have kind of, yeah, way if they've made their soft, they've done their soft tissue work, right? And, they, and they're just like, and they're finding, oh my gosh, Tegman's higher than I thought it was, right? And then, but they're, they've made their, you know, their pelvic flap where they're kind of cutting on the temporal line and, and they just don't want to like stop and, you know, elevate more, lift more up. So you should never be, um, if you look at this clip, essentially the, the, the resident drilling is limited by the soft tissue here. And they actually need to go higher up to kind of find Tegman better. And so you just kind of have to watch to kind of make sure that they're not being artificially limited by the soft tissue that they've created, right? Because again, you just want to, oh, I don't want to lose my time drilling. Let me don't, you know, I don't want to, and yeah, you just need to stop, elevate higher up, reposition the retractor, um, and then really, then you can find Tegman laterally like you're, you know, suggesting they do. So, all right. So we'll go back to Mallory. So thinking that this is a right ear, uh, I can see EAC, or I think at kind of the one o'clock position, focusing on kind of defining the posterior aspect and, and maybe trying to get towards the tip a little bit. Um, not very much water. I, I think that's working against them. Um, kind of very quick, um, I don't know, erratic strokes and, and also doesn't seem to start at the cortex, um, kind of just like burring down in there. Yeah, so um, sometimes when, yeah, exactly. So um, I think it's right ear. Um, and sometimes when people, you know, they're kind of like, I think in the person's mind, they're kind of like, oh, I want to drill really fast and get as much bone removed as possible on time, right? And, and they're just kind of, they drill like really fast, quick, short strokes, makes it very hard to see what you're drilling. And then there's bone dust like flying everywhere, right? Um, and so, and it just makes you kind of, I don't know, just kind of raise your blood pressure when you're kind of watching them, you know, uh, drill. So, so yeah, kind of like you're saying, they need to just use long, broad strokes, smooth strokes, um, and really kind of have the irrigation kind of helping them so that every time you're making a long stroke, you can kind of look back to right where you were and then just keep drilling continuously instead of in such a, haphazard manner. All right. So go back to Dan, I guess. All right, so right ear, drilling in the area, sort of in the area of the sigmoid sinus. Yep. Um, sort of uh, with a smaller, looks like a smaller cutting burr. Um, yeah. Good, taking good some bone up. off posteriorly. Um, again, sort of chasing their tail a bit as far as exposure and using too small of a burr and then really creating a bad ledge over the sinodural angle area. Um, to me, that, that is not appealing to me. Um, yeah, exactly. Good pickup. So yeah, they're using too small of a burr, right? So they have like a four cutter on instead of a six cutter. And then, you know, the other thing too is, you know, sometimes 
like when residents are drilling, they don't use their irrigation to kind of give you a constant flow of irrigation right where you're drilling, right? So that's why you see that pile of bone dust collecting. Um, so really they need to kind of use a bigger burr and then have their irrigation kind of flowing in a way such that it's constantly flowing so you don't get the bone dust kind of collecting up in that area. Yeah, so I think this is where they switch the larger burr. And again, it's, you always want to use the largest burr that you can um, safely use because it's kind of more efficient and faster to kind of find things. So no, that's very good. All right, let's go to here. Looks cadaveric. <laughs> cadaveric, they are. <laughs> yeah, these are uh, recorded. So we have uh, residents do like 45 minute recorded sessions of drilling temporal bones, and we kind of record them and give them feedback right after. We've got a nice, a lot of nice clips from it. So we're looking at a left ear. Um, we're through what looks like Kerner septum. You can see horizontal, but a very narrow passage. Um, we're with a smaller burr than probably what we started with. And it's kind of like suction in, looks like maybe we hit horizontal, suction in, drill in, and not, not enough space, I think, um, laterally to, to do that. Yeah, so you really get the sense like the um, person's drilling is very uncomfortable, right? And, and you can kind of see it because like you're saying, it's like they drill a little bit and they stop and then they put the suction in to kind of suction out what they're doing. And then they stop and then they even like turn the bone, right? Oh, I can't really see. Let me turn my bone and see if I can see that a little bit better, right? So, so what would you suggest to this person in terms of improving what they're doing? Like if you were to sit down and drill, you'd be like, oh, we got to do what? Yeah, I think a, a couple things. First, I would probably bring my posterior cut more posterior and I'd bring my anterior superior cut more anterior superior, both laterally first and then... Um, uh, kind of make the the most lateral aspect part wider to allow instruments to get in there better. I can't really see from that view, but but maybe even thin the canal too. So almost thinning in every direction. It looks like they're pretty good on Tegman, but coming up uh, uh, towards the zygoma um, a little bit more and, and posterior for sure. Yeah, I mean like posteriorly, they don't really have sigmoid out. Yeah. That's just like, and then so now they can barely get their suction in because they have to put their suction in angle in such a way that, yeah, they can hardly even see, right? Uh, so you probably take a big cutting burr and just kind of open it up um, posteriorly, like you're saying, you know, find sigmoid. I think that'll give you a lot more room to kind of get your instruments in there. And then you wouldn't have to like wiggle your bone back and forth so hard to even get a peek at what you want to look at. Yeah. Residents, residents trying to do the case rather than do the approach for the case. <laughs> And you ha then you have to go back and do the approach, which is moving two removing two inches of bone back here. That's uh, right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We'll go to the next one. All right. Dan. All right. So right here, we're sort of again exposing the area of the mastroid antrum. They've sort of dug themselves sort of posterior inferiorly and then they're sort of now coming back and really drilling a trough anterior superiorly um sort of with the, the you're using that whole they're using that whole drill and really that view shows creating this sort of trough up in that area rather than you know really finding tegman superiorly and saucerizing that whole area and and getting good uh, room on the ear canal and, and opening that antrum widely. They're sort of uh, re maybe they've realized that they've come in a little bit posteriorly and they're sort of trying to now drill the root of the zygoma. But they're unfortunately they're going to work their way up into the tegment if they keep moving in that direction rather than finding the tegment and then coming anteriorly. Yeah, I think um, I mean I think they actually do have tegment out. Like if you look at the I don't know, upper left, I guess my cursor's not working, but if you look at the upper left of the screen, they do have Tegman out here. Um, I think um, this is actually just a very aerated, um, a very aerated ear. And if you look at the ear canal, I mean, 
you know, they're like way forward anteriorly, right? I mean, they're, you know, anterior to the ear canal almost. So, so I think sometimes, um, like some, the temptation sometimes is just to like follow air cells and just kind of follow them. And I mean, I think you still have, want to be mindful of what your goal is, right? So just because there's air cells, you know, either all the way up anteriorly in this case, or even in this mastoid tip, I mean, you don't always have to open everything just to follow it. Um, and the antrum actually is not that, um, the antrum is actually, if you kind of look at six o'clock on the screen, if you remove that little bit of like um, septum there, the antrum's right under there, right? So they've pushed themselves way forward. I think they just kind of lost a little bit. They're just kind of like, I don't know, think about their beautiful deception and just following the air cells and just, you know, falling to follow them and not really paying attention to exactly where they were, right? Um, so, so again, I think they've done a pretty good dissecting job. I mean, they have the tegmin skeleton eyes, but I think it's just still trying to keep in mind the goals of the, the surgery, I guess. Yeah. All right. Left ear again. Slower drill. A lot of irrigation. Again, really still just kind of working into a hole. It looks like maybe went went into Tegman there. Um, also, a lot of having to manipulate because maybe the initial approach wasn't wide enough. And we still have a little bit of a ledge, um, uh, kind of anterior superiorly there. But I, I think you needed to kind of think about, you know, if they have a, it looks like maybe an air cell posterior, taking that air cell and, and you know, moving posterior to anterior to open uh, Kerner's septum. But I think they, they are thinking that they are more medial than they are and just headed straight up into Tegman there. Yeah, so, so I think, um, you know, when you first look at this clip, it looks like they're doing a pretty good job, right? I mean, you sit down and you're, and you're looking at the clip and it looks like they have Tegman skeleton eyes and an ear canal wall is not crazy thick. I mean, it looks pretty good, right? Um, but they still get into the Tegman, right? So, so, so the question, and, and when you first look at the clip, you're kind of like, oh, it looks like they're kind of going to open up Antrim pretty soon, right? And it's not until they turn the bone, you're like, oh, shoot, they're into Tegman. So... So when I look at this, you know, I think that actually, so it's, we always talk about landmarks, right? Um, but you actually have to use your landmarks, right? So, so they've actually found the Tegman laterally, right? And then if they just keep following it medially from there, they'll be like, oh, okay, that's the Tegman, that's it for sure. And they'll realize that they're kind of oriented incorrectly and going towards Tegman instead of Antrim, right? Um, so, so I think, yeah, again, I think overall, like, the person next drilling actually has done a pretty good job up to the point. Um, it's just they forgot that, okay, I, I'm finding landmarks for a reason. I want to use them. And then, you know, again, then instead of using it, they just kind of got right into the Tegman because they were paying attention. I mean, they were a little bit misoriented, right? Um, yeah, so landmarks are there not just to check off a box, but to kind of use to help you deeper in the dissection, I think. So, all right. And if anyone else has any comments, feel free to chime in. Um, I'm not sure who's else is on the call, but you're more than welcome to. All right. All right. Guess back to Dan. All right. I think this is a left ear. Hard for me. Yeah, a little to hard to tell, but um, hard to tell. Yeah, it's a left ear. Um, so it looks like kind of opening up probably what I think to be current septum medially there. Yeah, so, so when you look at it, it kind of looks like current septum, but then after they make a bigger hole, what do you think happened? That's straight through, right? Oh, they're through, yeah. They're through the posterior fossa dura, perhaps. Is that what that is? Or or the tagman, yeah. I think. Or tagman, yeah. okay. Well, how do you think that happened, and what would you recommend? Have to if you were to do it again, how'd you avoid that? Because I agree. I mean, you, you look at it in the beginning; it's kind of like well, it's aerated. Probably going to go into Kerner septum, right? Looks looks pretty good. Yeah, you know, I think again, it's a matter of landmark. So it's hard for me to tell on the on this particular sequence. You know, I can't see Tegman laterally super well defined i don't see the sigmoid i don't see the ear canal in this you know i i can't really tell exactly where they are but 
they've obviously dug themselves in a hole focusing on a place where they think something is rather than finding the structures that we know to be and then following using those structures to track themselves safely into the into the antrum yeah so if they uh, i mean if you look lateral to where they're at um it looks like there's some aeration there right laterally so they kind of had skeletonized it and be like oh that's tegman for sure and then they followed it immediately they would have been like oh you know i'm not gonna get a tegman because i'm kind of falling the whole way um the other thing to realize is that like well air cells typically are free i mean we have things like encephalocils, right? I mean, there's dehiscent tegmans and things, right? So just because it looks like there's an air cell over it does not necessarily mean there's not something, you know, dura right under it and exposed, right? So this could have been also a case where, I don't know, maybe the, the tegman was already dehiscent and they just kind of, you know, skeletonized it and got into it. But I think if you follow your landmarks, like you said, laterally and follow it medially, then you won't get into it, so. All right. Uh, so right ear, it uh, looks like we're, uh, you know, looking down horizontal. We've kind of come through the antrum, changed to a smaller drill, smaller section irrigator. Um, you know, if this maybe were a more advanced person with a lot of control and confidence, I'd say maybe okay, but it almost looks like they're flying off into the ear canal at some point and like really using a lot of pressure uh, in that region, having already kind of confirmed where Tegman is to the left, mm -hmm. makes me a little bit uncomfortable in both ways. And I don't think they're using their irrigation appropriately. So um, um, I think more controlled, uh, more controlled drilling, better irrigation coming from lateral to, to medial, or at least kind of stroke, 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 so that you're seeing everything that you're drilling underneath. And some of those strokes are really just keeping the drill right on the bone. And you even see some uh, kind of burning of the bone there. Yeah, it's like they don't even recognize that like Incus is pretty close by, right? Yeah. Um, and they're just kind of like pushing right into it. So, so as you're kind of alluding to, you know, usually if you think Incus is close by and you, know, you have like a diamond burr, and you kind of use like like longer strokes and kind of bring it out into the root um, kind of medially instead of such an uncontrolled fashion, right? Because um, they're kind of just blasting into it, not really thinking, oh, there's something I don't want to damage deeper in there. The incus is right around the corner, so to speak. Yeah. All right. All right. So left ear. Mm -hmm. Pretty zoomed in. Um, don't really get a feel for the the global picture of things. So that may be one area. I think they're a little too zoomed in for where they are. Um, it looks like they're working on the area of the facial nerve, uh, probably a little bit lateral to that area. Yeah, uh, they're about finding facial recess, right? They have a big burr and they're trying to like lower air cells. And um, what do you see at like 12 o'clock? You see that like, it's kind of, um, I don't know, I, I guess my curve is not working, but this what, there's a white patch at 12 o'clock. What do you think happened? Let me kind of look at that area again. Well, they've definitely burned bone there. And then. It sounds like a big opening in the posterior wall of the ear canal. Is it? Yeah. It's hard, really, that's hard to tell that. Yeah, hard to tell there, but they have like, this big opening in the posterior wall of the ear canal. And that's all like the skin. Oh, right okay. The clock. Oh, I see. So how do you think they ended up? Um, so they obviously got dis they got um, disoriented, and in part, I mean, in probably because they have the same view that you have, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe part of it. Um, so, what would you recommend? What you'd be like? Hey, you got into the ear canal. How would you avoid it? Like, why did they end up doing what they did? Yeah. So, I mean, for one you know, they need to zoom out, you know, especially in these cadaveric bones. I mean, you can see straight down the barrel of the ear canal. I mean, you keep that that vector in your mind and, and you know, you have that in your mind and, you know, you want to thin the ear canal, but, you know, it, it you know, striking that balance between over thinning and 
uh, thinning enough is and you know you've already got the lateral semicircular canal you can see that down in the depth of the dissection so um, you know based on that the facial nerve is going to be much more posterior than where they're drilling anyway yeah. so they've already adequately thinned it um, so I think just again using the lateral landmarks and and they've done a good if, if I think I think it looks like before that they've done a pretty good job getting everything opened up so um, they've just uh, lost sight of the uh, of the goal you know and uh, yeah I, so what happens is like yeah so kind of like you're saying I mean so you know, they're so focused probably on looking for facial nerve, right? So, so the, I mean, they're like, I don't want to injure facial nerve, I'm going to open it up and you kind of lose track of other things close by. So part of it is also knowing, you know, as you're doing certain things, what else could, I guess, almost go wrong, right? So if you're looking, cause like the backside of your burr can also hit what as you're focused on not getting into your facial nerve, right? Um, so, so you're correct. I mean, if, if they kind of look down to see the vector that the ear canal wall is, um, which I think is useful to do even in, you know, in real patients, not just cadaveric patients, um, then you can kind of orient yourself on where the ear canal is going to. And then you know where to kind of start the, the broad strokes, kind of getting down the aerosols over the facial nerve before, because um, you kind of know where the ear canal wall is. Yeah. All right. Looks like a left ear. Uh, we've got egus exposed. Uh, looks like I'm working with a diamond. Looks like trying to thin, uh, expose ingus a little bit more. You know, looking like a, appropriately cautious. Um, hard to tell if we went into the ear canal there, but. Yeah, they did at the very end. Okay, right. yeah. The very, very end, they just went into the ear canal wall. Right? <laughs> um, so, so what do you think happened or what would you, I mean, cause actually if you look at it, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily think they'd go into the ear canal wall based on this two dimensional kind of view, right? Yeah, I think they've got a little bit of a, a lateral to medial view and, and almost if they kind of dropped their view down to look more directly at the incus and the uh, EAC, they'd be able to see how thin it was getting. Um, and I think maybe they're creating a little bit of a ledge between their the ledge overlying incus and what's a little bit more laterally, and that's where they get into the the canal. Yeah, I think um, yeah, like you said, they're, I mean they have an appropriate size burr. They're kind of being very careful on the incus, but I mean you want to drill like with intention, right? So so it's like okay, they want to get the incus a little bit better. That's fine, and then it's almost like oh look, there's a little thick bone here. Let me just, I mean I'm not sure what that achieves, right? Um, and and again they kind of weren't they're focused on the incus and they're just kind of sometimes oh let me just get this a little bit that's kind of here here and here but not really paying that a close attention to how thick the ear canal wall actually is or how thin it is right um so, so again i think if they just kind of drill the intention it's like okay i got i'm doing incus let's get it all right got it good and then let's move on to the facial recess right um but but again it's also the fact of being mindful of things that you can kind of mess up i guess right because again, just knowing that sometimes the ear canal can look misleading if you're not paying attention to the vector of it. Yeah, it's easy to kind of get into um, when you're focused on other, other supposedly more important parts, right? So, all right. Oof. So again, a left ear. Uh, sort of drilling with the side of a large cutting burr. Um, I think I can see the lateral canal and the depth of that, but they're they're sort of using the edge of this burr um, coming along anteriorly towards the region of the facial nerve rather than sort of painting a with a broad brush and progressing from a lateral to medial direction uh, sort of searching for it. I think they're. I think that's what they're doing. They're looking for the nerve there. Yeah. So I mean, so kind of as you allude to, they have a cutter. They shouldn't really have a cutter there. I think, right? I mean, if they're yeah. looking for the facial nerve, and then they essentially took the cutter and drilled the incus buttress and drilled onto the incus a little bit as well. Um, so really, they need to switch to like a diamond burr, right? Because um, you're closer to structures you don't want to get into, um, rather than using that big cutter and kind of getting stuff you don't want to. So, all right. Uh, 
left ear. We've got sigmoid delineated with a small drill. Uh, looks like maybe trying to define a little bit better. Uh, Sinodural angle real deep there. Um, but a lot of irrigation. It looks like too much irrigation. And has, again, sort of like limited space. Um, I think maybe could improve space over the sigmoid uh, and inferiorly. Um, and really close to horizontal, having a hard time seeing how, how deep they're going. But again, like the kind of drill section, drill section. How about uh, right, explicitly white there. Yeah, right. So right there looks like facial nerve. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I think again, that's a little bit like too much irrigation, not really understanding what, what they're looking at and being limited by space, all three of those things. So, so essentially yeah. they, they expose the facial nerve with a four cutter, yeah. right? which is probably not ideal. Now, how would you, if you kind of then talk to the person doing it, what would you have been like for next time, how you like, how to avoid doing that? Well, you can see like the irrigation just kind of wells up and it's really hard to understand what kind of what goal they have in mind. Like is the goal right at this point to define the sinodural angle? And if so, like let's work there. If the goal is to look for the facial nerve, then let's go up on our magnification. Let's switch to a diamond drill and let's control the irrigation a little bit better. So we're drilling in water, but we can also see what we're drilling on top of. Um, yeah, I think it looks like they, they probably think, oh, there's still a lot of, I mean, I mean, I assume they think there's still air cells over the facial nerve, right? And they're kind of like, oh, there's quite a bit still, like he still use a cutter. Um, obviously not, because they have the facial nerve exposed. So, um, you know, you really want to use the lateral, like the lateral semicircular canal to kind of tell you, oh, you're getting close, you're getting close, you just switch over to a diamond, right? Um, and so I think these kind of, you know, maybe, um, they, again, they should have switched earlier, and the question would be like, how do you know when to switch, right? Um, in which case, I mean, you have your lateral semicircular canal, you have your incus out, it cannot give you level. Um, so they hopefully would switch earlier next time. So, all right. Okay, another left ear. Drilling with a fairly large diamond burr in the area of the facial nerve. See the lateral canal exposed sort of uh, uh, leaving a lot of um, probably not using enough irrigation there, um, sort of using small uh, small repetitive strokes or leaving the burr sort of planted in one region uh, for a little too long. You can't quite see what you're drilling on in that situation. Um, and again, sort of digging in a hole. So sort of looking for the the nerve in a in one spot rather than sort of painting with a broad brush and 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 sort of being critical of that area the whole entire area and searching for it um so, so would, if you were to sit down what would you do then to kind of help them out i agree with the digging the hole comment so i think they're really limited again like mallory commented on previous uh, dissections on their posterior extent I mean, I would take a, a large cutting burr and, and open that entire area up. Um, you know, they're, they're nowhere near the sigmoid sinus. Um, and that's going to give you a lot more room to work and really open that entire bone up. Yeah, so you can kind of hardly get in there and they can hardly get their suction and they're drilling at the same place, right? Um, and they're kind of looking for facial, I mean, he's trying to look for facial nerve, but it's, it seems very, very... Um, uncomfortable because they have, don't have adequate exposure posteriorly, right? Um, and, and the thing is that, um, the amazing thing is, I mean, you can do it, right? I mean, sometimes if you have a really anterior sigma, you'd have no choice, you have to do it. But then, as we'll see in the next video, it just compounds, right? So this is the same person, and then they're getting deeper, and then they kind of look like, looks like they maybe found their sentinel cell, perhaps, to the facial recess, but it's just like a big struggle, right? Um, and so, you know, if you don't have adequate exposure, again, you can complete it. It just takes you like twice as long and it's less safe. And then they switch to a smaller burr. And, and again, it's just, it's just the deeper you get without adequate exposure, the, the harder the situation gets and the longer it takes you. 
right? So, so kind of like you're saying, Dan, I just take a big cutter and just kind of find a sigmoid that'll open things up really, really nicely for you. And then you can get your instruments in and your drilling and the suction you're good at the same time and kind of see everything you're doing. So, all right. This looks like a left ear. Yeah, I think we're at the point of trying to find facial. Uh, it looks like we, we probably have an appropriate size drill and suction irrigator, but I think some of the, the strokes are, you know, they're sort of like chaotic, not um, in a methodical kind of like right to left, ink is buttress, um, in, to inferior, so we've got like a little um, looking like way far inferior and then posterior, um, probably maybe are not aware where our posterior canal is gonna be. Um, looks like disorientation, I think. So how, would, um, yeah, so it almost looks like they're like thinking, oh, well, there's an aerosol trap here. Maybe let me see if I get lucky and open it up and find something. Is that gonna be recess? Oh, yeah, maybe not. Let me go to this other spot here that there's another aerosol track. Let me see if I can find anything over here, right? Um, which is probably why they're kind of jumping. Um, so how would you do this? Well, I have a couple of methods. So two choices for, for us. One would be to better define incus and sort of follow uh, the antrum and extend the antrum into the facial recess, either taking down the buttress or really thinning the buttress. Um, and using the air cell just inferior to the buttress and then widening from there, mm -hmm. taking the posterior air cells of the facial recess down kind of sequentially from posterior moving more medially. Um, and then the other, you know, the other way is rather than just kind of exposing incus more is to stick right towards the buttress and then go inferiorly from there. Taking a better view of the canal than I can see here. So I might, instruct somebody to kind of move the microscope and orient the facial recess in the center of the screen and so that they kind of get uh, keep keep themselves oriented with the incus and the canal in view. Yeah, so um, I think, yeah, I mean I agree. So I mean echoing what you're saying, it's I mean I think you have to decide what you what you want to do. So if it's if you think there's a lot of air cells over the facial recess still like lateral to it. And you want to kind of get it to the same level. You want to find the nerve, and you probably would switch to maybe even a bigger burr, a diamond, and and just kind of like search kind of long linear strokes, kind of going, you know, what superior to inferior, just kind of looking and in, in a broad area to kind of and lowering it all down, right? Um, if you think that you have enough of a sentinel cell to kind of enter into the facial recess, then maybe you go to even a small. I mean, I don't think they have a two here, but you can even go to two or one and a half and just kind of open up the sentinel cell and right by the buttress and see if you can kind of get in that way, right? And again, it's a little hard on this video to tell, um, you know, depth and, you know, how, how many aerosols are over it, but I think you gotta commit, right? So it's not just like you're saying haphazard, I hope I get lucky and open up into recess. It's you gotta, okay, I'm gonna find the nerve and, you know, get a bigger burr and find it, lower things down, or, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and enter into recess because I have, I have enough exposure already, yeah, so. All right. Looks like we've changed sides to a right ear. They're uh, again in the area looking for the facial nerve using a very small burr. Um, they've, or they're actually drawing the, the recess, so they feel like they found the nerve posteriorly. Um, and they're opening up the recess. They sort of started a little bit inferior uh, to where normally I would. Oh, now they're drilling on the other side of the buttress there. Yeah. So, do you think they're expecting to find the nerve where they found it? Um, I'd probably say no, but because uh, um, watch well, just watch the clip. A so, if you wait a little bit longer, you'll uh -huh. see like the clip kind of edits across, and then you can kind of start to see the nerve in there. Like they're almost kind of drilling. Oh, I see it. Okay. You know what I mean? It, yeah, so yeah. They're they're sort of coming down on the, yeah. Like it's almost kind of like they got this little small burr, and initially yeah. you're kind of like, oh, they're opening up the facial recess, looks pretty yeah. good, and then all of a sudden it's like the nerve is like 
right where the drill is going to be poking into next, right? So, so what do you think happened and what would you suggest? So I think probably a, a few things. Number one is they didn't really find, they never really truly found the nerve in the first place or proved to themselves where the nerve was. They found a facial, they found what they thought was probably a facial recess track and committed to it a little too aggressively with a small burr that then led them because their vector was going sort of more posterior and they left bone over that nerve it sort of led them back around into the front side of the nerve um in within the the area of the recess so for me it'd be i would be using a much larger diamond burr at this point um just like you you just said on the last one opening up progressing gradually more from a lateral to medial direction sort of finding where the nerve is and then you know sort of working the the recess from there but um they sort of committed a little too early i think uh without truly knowing where the nerve is and the direction that it's running yeah they still i mean there's still a lot of air cells like you know in and even anterior to where they were drilling right the level's kind of off and then they kind of saw something where like oh that looks kind of great let me poke into it um but if you kind of Again, I think you get a sense that there's a lot of air cells just kind of even anterior to it and lateral to it. So their level's a little bit off and they're a little bit, that's why they were surprised, right? Yeah, it's exactly like you're saying. You take a bigger burr and just kind of level those all out and then you'll find them. And then the nerve actually just open up there, but at least you don't, you're not like drilling into it, thinking the recess is right there. So, all right. Well, I think it's about <laughs> six o'clock and that's actually all the videos I have. So. Good. Yeah, so hopefully that was kind of helpful. Um, but again, I think it's a lot of nice recordings and at least from, at least at our institution, the residents really appreciate it just because again, you can kind of just show them exactly what you're talking about, which is a lot more useful than just kind of talking about it to them, so. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, I, I, we do this um, here at MUSC uh, and it's really helpful for both residents and fellows to just sit down together and think about what they were doing in retrospect and then how it might be different. I just very curious, Dr. Hung, you said you were doing this with your third third year uh, residents. Yeah. How how much drilling experience do they have before you do this exercise with them? Um, so um, the reason we time it there, so they've been through the temporal bone, um, there's a temporal bone like weekend course like once a year. So they've already done, they do that intern year first, like second year, and then this is after, you know, a day of the third year. Um, and then they do have some experience in drilling mastoids. I mean, not a ton, but already some there. Um, but, but part of the reason we set it there is because um, then they're going to go on to their like bigger three month blocks of otology. So, so actually as attendings, we actually kind of want to know <laughs> like where they're at. Um, so, so when we kind of, when we first did it, we were kind of like, oh, hey, time there's a sheet go with it and we had one resident that was like he literally was like oh i mean you look at him drilling you're like what are you like he went through the, the lateral semester canal he went through his facial nerve and we're like what are you doing and he was like well i mean i saw that i get check marks for points for finding these things right and so he's like look i get my facial nerve point i get my lateral canal point we're like no 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 no, no. right so so and so now we always counsel him we're kind of like hey you know um you know, yeah, you want to try to be efficient. You want to go to it, um, but also know that you're going to be operating with us in the OR next year, right? Um, and so you want to also drill in a manner that we look and we're going to be feel like things are safe and comfortable with with you drilling, right? Which has helped, right? Um, so, so so again, we we time it there for that additional reason because it just kind of helps us um, know where they're at before they're really you know spending a lot of time more independently in the OR. So. Great. And do you have any advice for fellows who might not be um, might be watching this later also um, for how to balance um, kind of allowing appropriate autonomy, but being also cautious and ultimately in control if, if they are the ones that are in the teaching role? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's. I, again, I think if, if you can see residents drilling in the temporal bone lab, you have a little leg up on it, right? 
Because there's some residents I'm like, oh, they're going to be great. You feel like they're comfortable, they know what they're doing. And there's others that, you know, like if they're drilling, you know, there's that one video where they're drilling like back and forth really rapidly, right? I mean, there's some things that are just not safe, right? Or they're leaving ledges and they're drilling under the ledge. So, so you know, I mean, there's a lot of, um, so, you know, I think you can give them autonomy, but it's just, if they're doing something clearly unsafe that's going to run you into trouble, then you're going to be like, well, here, let me sit down and show you kind of how to do it. And then hopefully they learn from it with that immediate feedback again. And then next time around, they can kind of do better. Yeah. Yeah, but it's certainly the challenge, right? Because, again, you have your cases, too, you want to get done or... If you have a trans lab, I don't know if you have the residents do the mastoid or, I mean, you know, you want to get to your part too. So it's, you know, it's sometimes a tough balance. So. Well, thank there, you so much. Oh, there, huh? As part of that, uh, as part of this exercise, do you then have a video that's like a pro section or one of you, one of you guys drilling a mastoid and finding the critical structures as a sort of a final demonstration on do, do you all use a, a tool like that at all? Uh, yeah, we haven't. I mean, that's not a bad thought. I mean, usually what we'll do is we'll kind of sit down and just kind of show them, okay, this is how we would drill it as opposed to how you did it on there. But no, we don't have a pre-recorded video kind of, you know, or even, I mean, you could even think of making a video where, you know, you drill it wrong and drill it right, like, you know, one right after the other, um, but, but we don't have that. Yeah, yeah. a good thought. All right. Dan, where are you these days? I'm at UVA, Dr. Meyer. Awesome. And how far are you through all this process? I just started fellowship. All right. Good. Good to see Dr. you. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us. This is great. Um, uh, I th and I think if uh, there's no more questions, we'll sign off for now. Okay. Right. Thanks Thank a lot you. for doing this. Very helpful. <laughs> nice to see you, Ted. <laughs> Joey, you're looking younger, my friend. I'm looking younger? Yes. <laughs> I look the same. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Thanks.